Chapter 10 Flip Flops and Registers First we'll discuss the SR flip flop. This is in the set reset flip flop. It's a asynchronous flip flop that uses either a cross nor or a cross nand setup. This is your cross nand I mean cross nor setup where you have the output of the set set re, uh, flip flop goes to the input of the reset flip flop to create your Q knot and your Q and vice versa. Here's a function table for that same flip flop with your set and reset. You have your zero zero equals a hold condition there's no change and you have your set equals one and your reset equals zero it means the flip-flop is set and then vice versa the set equals zero and reset equals one you have your flip-flop equals reset and your one one function means there's nothing used you can also have the reverse happen by inputting an inverter in the set and reset inputs. This basically switches your inputs but the same set, reset, not used and hold conditions hold true. The only thing that changes are your Q and Q not values. For set and reset flip-flop both are true and complemented Q outputs. There's some timing analysis that will be discussed, as well as these are the symbols for your set and reset flip flops knot as well. There's different versions. You can have the regular uh, Q knot or the Q bubble as a different representation for the same thing. There's another type of set reset flip flop called the gated set reset flip flop. This is a synchronous device which operates sequentially. This is seen in figure 10-8 here. With a gate enable pin, a uh, high gate enable allows set and reset to pass through. This is shown through the truth table and to the left in figure A is the diagram for that same chip. So you have a gate 0 you have all hold states and when gate is 1 and set and reset is 0 you have a hold then you have a reset a set and an unused for your inputs which turn your outputs to uh, logic values 0 or 1 and gated D flip-flop as a data flip-flop it's used an inverter added to an SR flip-flop as shown here to uh, single output for both set and reset and the output waveform is shown here you take um, your output follows your input with your D and your gate as well determining your output whether it follows or it's latched. A 7475 is a D-latch device, it's four transparent D-latches, it's a bistable latch. This is an example of that chip with the internal diagram shown above with the four D-latches with its cues. And this is the function table showing it has a data enable and data latched operating modes for this chip. This is a 7474, it's a D-latch with a clock pulse and again here's a, a waveform diagram and it shows you have the propagation of the inverter with uh, your narrow spikes occur at positive edge of your clock pulse when your CPD is high as well as the clock switching. Here's your function table for your 7474D flip-flop. You have a couple operating modes. New, the asynchronous set, asynchronous reset, 
the not used function, and the synchronized set and synchronous reset. The X state here means that we don't care about what these inputs are. They can be high or low. It will not change your output level. And the next type of flip-flop to discuss is the master-slave JK flip-flop. Its JK flip-flop has a toggle mode, which switches to the opposite state at active clock edges. The master-slave master receives data while the input trigger is high, and the slave receives data from master and outputs it when clock goes low. This is the function table for that chip with your hold, set, reset, and toggle. Toggle is when J is one and K is one as well. Toggle means the Q flips to the opposite state. It's also a pulse triggered or level triggered device. The input data read during the entire time clock pulse is at a high level. One's a catching. This is the internal device. The Dash lines are internal feedback connections that enable the toggle operation. And here we have the same thing again, just changing the clock pulse at positive edge to negative edge, which switches the J and the K set input and reset input. And the function table for that with our no change and our switching and our opposite state for hold, set, reset, and toggle. An integrated circuit form of the JK flip-flop would be your 7476, your 74LS76, these are diagrams of those, and your function table again your set, reset, and hold, and toggle modes all combined. Uh, you, to form a D flip-flop from a JK flip-flop, you can add an inverter. Or to form a toggle flip-flop to tie the inputs to high, as shown here. With your D line with an inverter and your J and K connected to a logic level 1 high to create that form. Using an octal D flip-flop to, to an microcontrol application. You have octal ICs, 8 on a chip, it's an 8-bit register. As shown here, you have your microcontrol, your 68HC11 with your, your flip-flop here, your 273, taking out the values and switching them into your two digit digital display. So in summary of this chapter, the set reset flip flop is a single data bit storage circuit that can be constructed using basic gates. Adding gate enable circuitry to the set reset flip flop makes it synchronous. This means that it will it will operate under the control of a clock or enable signal. The D flip-flop operates similar to the SR flip-flop, except it has only one single input, the D input. The 7475 is an integrated circuit D latch. And the 7474 is an integrated circuit D flip-flop, has two synchronous inputs, a D and a CP, and two asynchronous inputs, SD and RD, the set and reset and the Q changes to the level of D at the positive edge of clock pulse. The Q responds immediately to the asynchronous inputs regardless of the synchronous operations. The master-slave JK flip-flop consists of two latches, a master and a slave. The 7476 is an edge-triggered JK flip-flop. It has synchronous and asynchronous inputs and the 7476 is similar, except as a pulse-triggered master-slave type. 